John taken to the Lord's day in the spirit. This is what he saw. This is prior to the Lord's day. And I stood upon the sand of the sea. Now this, this chapter is on earth, notice. Chapter 7 is in heaven. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. A new religion, a new plan. We have a new one world order. This is a political beast. You all know that. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard. Note, our spot is not the same as their spot. I speak of the song of Moses, Deuteronomy chapter 32. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. He even like our, spoke like our brother Judah. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Any question of who the dragon is? Well, go to Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Satan, that old dragon. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death. This is speaking of the political system. This is known as the deadly wound. You know, you know it as. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. He was healed by Antichrist appearance, as we'll see in a moment. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. A great, false, evil revival. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Question mark. Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things, great lies, and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months prophecies of Satan always in months. You, we all know this time of 42 months has been shortened to five months in Revelation chapter 9. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. We just read it in 2 Thessalonians 2 uh, verse 4. He as God sitteth in the temple of God claiming to be God. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. The two witnesses will be overcome. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. There won't be a tent big enough for this revival whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Is your name written in that book? Many of you know that your name is, and you know that you have a destiny. You know that these things are going to happen. Why? Because you've studied God's Word. When you see them come to pass, what I want you to take from this message is, I want you to say, this is proof of God's Word. Do you know how proud your father is of you? That you stood with him in the first earth age? When we've got gullible people out here that will go worship a golden calf. Do you know how proud he is of the fact that you stood with him in the first earth age and you are going to stand with him again in this, the second earth age? When the Antichrist appears? He's very proud of you. If any man have ear, let him hear. This is always... A key for the elect. Listen up. Verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience of the faith of the saints. This verse kind of got butchered in the translation. It's a Hebrew figure of speech that's utilized in Zechariah. I know, I think, another place in the Old Testament. It's, you know, he that is for the captivity, let him go into captivity. He that is to die by the sword, he'll die by the sword, is all this is saying. Don't get it twisted around. Verse 11, and I beheld, John continues, another beast, this is a religious beast, the Antichrist, coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Let's see, two horns like a lamb, he looks like Jesus, the Lamb of God, but he spoke like Satan. Wake up, friends. This is the false prophet that Christ warned us about in Matthew 24, verse 11. 
And he exerciseth all power of the first beast, the political, before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. What a revival it's going to be when that deadly wound is healed. You're not going to partake in it, though. You're not going to have any part of that new religion. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Prepare yourself mentally and spiritually for that. He's going to have satanic, miraculous powers. I mean, we could walk out in this parking lot and he could take one of those 32-foot motorhomes parked out there, make it stand up on its nose and spin around like a top. Is that going to shock and awe you? No, it's not. You know he has satanic, miraculous powers. Do you think it's going to shock and awe the rest of the world that hasn't taken time to study God's Word? You better believe it. They're going to go, only God could do something like that because they haven't studied. Verse 14, And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles. The miracles are how he deceives them. He had power to do in the sight of the beast, the, the political, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. And he, the Antichrist, had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Boy, that sounds kind of scary to me, doesn't it, you? I mean, here we're going to be on earth, and we're going to be facing the satanic, miraculous powers of Satan all by our little old selves. No, God wouldn't leave, leave us in that situation. Are, are we going to depend on a golden calf to help us out in that situation? No. We've got something much better than a golden calf, friends. You know it. We're going to be standing in place, Ephesians chapter 6, with that gospel armor on, ready to be delivered up before that Antichrist, and you're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you. Not going to premeditate what you say. Be careful of that because you don't want to get into that rap. But we got all that, but we got something else too. You know, God knows how you fight fire. You fight fire with fire. Back up a couple chapters to Revelation 11. Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. And I will give power unto my two witnesses, the Lord speaking. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. Prophecies of the children of God always in days. This, you probably know, ten days longer than the 42 months that Satan had in chapter 13. I think both have been reduced proportionally. By that I mean I think the two witnesses will be here approximately two to three days, not ten days, but two to three, maybe two days before the Antichrist appears. Okay? Why is he going to be here? Because we need him. Right? Here all this is going on. You know, what do you think Mary thought? when Gabriel appeared to Mary. And he said, you know, Mary, you haven't ever known a man. And you're with child. What do you think, Mary, what went through Mary's mind when that happened? Think about it. I mean, this is not normal. And all this is going to be going on around, but we need those two witnesses. Why? Well, the next verse. This wind is blowing my pages around here. Excuse me. Verse 4. These are, or represent, the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of earth. Zechariah chapter 4, they're called in the Hebrew tongue, the sons of oil. And they're hooked up by these pipes directly into the seven-branched candlestick, which is representative of the 7,000 of God's elect. What is olive oil? Always symbolic of truth. They're going to be pumping truth to the 7,000 elect at the time all this is going on. 
verse 5, and if any man will hurt them, talking about the two witnesses, the sons of oil, fire proceedeth out of their mouth. You fight fire with fire and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. You think the two witnesses will have the power to protect the 7,000 elect? I think so. Have that gospel armor on, because I'll guarantee you the fiery darts of Satan are real. If you're loving and serving the Lord right now, the fiery darts of Satan are real. Better have that gospel iron on. Armor, excuse me, verse 6. These, referring to the two witnesses, have power to shut heaven. They got the same power that Elijah had to make it not rain, if that's what they choose. That it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters. Check out this word waters. It's interesting. It's homima, hami, excuse me, hahima in the Greek. It's especially the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Check it out. What did that say? They have power over waters. You're familiar with the symbology of Revelation. You know the waters are the people, right? Revelation 17, 15. To turn them back to the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. To smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. And let me tell you, these two witnesses are going to be about as popular with Antichrist and those that are worshiping his new religion as Micaiah was with Ahab. He, they're not going to be very popular with Satan. And when they shall have finished or accomplished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. That's this false prophet, the Antichrist. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Don't ever forget that verse. Fear not he who can kill your flesh. Fear he who can destroy both your soul and your flesh in hell. You think these two witnesses are scared of Satan? No, they're not. They know God's word. They know his truth. They know what their purpose is. They will accomplish that purpose. We know what our purpose is. We will accomplish our purpose. There's going to be a revival going on, though, friends. I tell you, listen up. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street. This is plataia in the Greek. It's an open place, not a street. Of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Now, there are very good scholars who argue over where is this that they're talking about? And they overlook, it said spiritually, it's Sodom and Gomorrah. It's where also our Lord was crucified. You can ask any kid that's been going to Sunday school for five years, where was Jesus crucified? And he can tell you Jerusalem, so there's no question. Verse 9, And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Well, we had this fellow 2,000 years ago that was crucified. His name was Jesus. They placed him in a tomb for three and a half days later. He told them beforehand, I'm going to rise on the third day. They're not going for that this time. They're going to say, we're going to leave these two bodies out here in the open where we can watch them for three and a half days because I, I, I believe the two witnesses will have already prophesied to them, we're going to raise. You kill us, but in three and a half days, we're raising. And you know what? At this time, we should be rejoicing. Why? Three and a half days later, Jesus is going to be with us. Whew, glory. Ten. But there's still a revival going on back at the camp. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another. The great revival because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Just as the truth of Micaiah hurt Ahab and his 400, the truth of the two witnesses hurts Antichrist and those who following his new 
religion. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God, who? From God entered into them. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. This is Pipto in the text. It's from Epipito. It's a, a paralyzing fear. Can you imagine how they're going to feel when they realize they have worshipped the wrong Christ? They're going to be praying for mountains to fall on them, beloved. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. I believe this is the 7,000 fallen angels who are reserved in chains of darkness, as is written in Jude chapter 1, verse 6. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. This earthquake occurs when the feet of Jesus Christ hit that Mount of Olives, as it's written in Zechariah chapter 14. And the second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. The seventh trump is the only one remaining. And the seventh angel sounded, the seventh trump, and there were great voices in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. There's one more revival after this event comes to pass. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 54. Just a few verses and we're done. Isaiah 54, another revival. This one's a righteous revival. Isaiah 54, 1. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail with child. For more are the children of the desolation, desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Now, you'd have a hard time understanding this if you didn't under, think of this spiritually. We're not talking about a woman who cannot have children. Spiritually speaking, remember in Mark 13 where it talks about blessed are those who aren't with child, who have not given suck to the Antichrist? That's what this is talking about here. Blessed are you who did not bow a knee to Baal and worship the Antichrist. You weren't, you know, what happens if the husband is gone 2,000 years and he comes back and you're with child, what does that mean? That means you've been spiritually in bed with Satan. And those who worship him are impregnated spiritually. Stay with me here now. We're not talking physical uh, impregnation. We're talking about a spiritual impregnation. Christ, when he was carrying that cross up to Golgotha with the thorns in his forehead and blood running down the side of his face, what did he do? He stopped and he looked at the women and said, Weep not for me, you women of Jerusalem. Weep for those who are with child. In this time period is what he was talking about. And he also went on to say, Blessed are the barren. Verse 2, the revival. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, and strengthen thy stakes, or thy tent pegs. This is saying, get ready. There's going to be a great revival. What happens on the first day of the Lord's Day? Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess. They won't stay bowed forever. But on that first day, they will all bow. And this is saying, make your tent huge because it's going to be a great revival. Verse 3, For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit or rule the Gentiles, better translated nations, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited those places that have been starved for the truth of God's Word. 
those places were, that were defiled by the presence of Antichrist setting up his throne in Jerusalem. All that abomination dispelled by truth. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed. You who study God's word, 2 Timothy chapter 2, what is it, verse 15, study to show thyself approved, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. You study his word. You're not going to be ashamed when the Antichrist comes because you know his word. You know there are going to be satanic, mir satanic miracles performed. You're prepared for it. You're not going to be fooled. You're not going to worship. Fear not thou that be ashamed, I got that, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame, for thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widow, widowhood anymore. This reminded me of the old sister Har Harlot Babylon. You remember what does she say in Revelation uh, chapter 18? I'm not a widow. I sit a queen. You know what, though? While the Antichrist is here on earth, this is written in the book of Psalms, they're going to come to you and say, here's our God. Where is your God? You know, we might feel a little bit like a widow at that time. And God's saying right here, yeah, this has all got to happen, but believe me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reward you for it. Listen up. For thy maker is thine husband, and the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall be, shall he be called. This indicates universal dominion, and it's a good reason for the barren to sing. For the Lord hath called thee a woman forsaken. This is written to you, beloved, and grieved in spirit, and a wife of youth, when thou wast refused, saith thy, thy God. For a small moment, and it is a small moment compared to the eternity, have I forsaken thee. While the Antichrist is here on earth, these things have to happen, and God's kind of apologizing here. I'm going to put you through this, but I know you can handle it. But with great mercies will I gather thee. Antichrist must have his time. We must be delivered up. We will stand our ground. Many of you have a destiny. Verse 8, in a little wrath or a little anger, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer, your kinsman Redeemer. Verse 9, for this as the waters of Noah, for this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I would not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. God put that rainbow there so that, as a promise that he'll never flood the earth as he did in the days of Noah. You know what? That, that promise right there in that verse is tied to you, his elect. So every time you see a rainbow, I want you to remember God's saying to you, things are going to get tough. Yeah, I, but I know you can handle it. And I will love you forever dearly if you'll just do what I'm asking you to do. Just like that rainbow is indicating he'll never flood the earth again. Verse 10 to complete. For that the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall not be depart from thee. Neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. So, got a lot of, you know, this controversy is, is not a new thing going on between Satan and our Heavenly Father. The controversy isn't between Christians. You know, and sometimes I feel like that's what's kind of trying to be put on us is that the controversy is between this denomination or that denomination. The enemy is Satan. The controversy is between our Heavenly Father and Satan. Clear choice. Which do you choose? Which revival are you going to participate in? The revival of righteousness 
or the revival of evil. I know what the answer to that. Yeah.